afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Friday. It is officially the last Friday of October, for that matter. Welcome back to Weather Central Nazario. Thank you for joining me this Friday afternoon, guys. I have a lot of information to pass along to you, but before we get into this video, I want you to know that I have started to reach out to a few different organizations out there that will help get this Weather Center Relief Fundraiser off the ground here very soon. More details tonight at our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. So if you're interested in making a cordial donation to help out those folks afflicted by Hurricane Otis out there in Acapulco, Mexico and other outer lying areas, please tune in tonight at 8 p.m. I'll let you guys know the full details and exactly how we're going to get that process off the ground and get it going so that way we can get it hopefully a decent amount of donations readily available to send out to those folks out there and help out in any way, shape, or form that we can. Today we're going to get started with the College of DuPage water vapor satellite imagery and you can see we have three distinct pockets of very dense dry air. Three of these pockets identifying where our subtropical high height centers or our subtropical ridges currently sit. Because of these three subtropical ridges you can see right in through here this very deep channel of moist air advection coming up right out of the equatorial regions over South and Central America, the Eastern Pacific and surging to the north across the Central and Eastern Caribbean before getting picked up by our polar front jet working across the northern tier United States and through the northern Atlantic in this west to east fashion. We have had some pretty substantial changes in what our computer models are thinking the jet is going to do as we get closer and closer to potentially seeing not only a little bit of organization down there in the southern Caribbean, currently highlighted by the National Hurricane Center at a 30% chance of development over the next seven days, but also with what could possibly be coming at the very initial phase of November 2023 between the days of, I believe, the 2nd to the 5th is where I'm looking at potential development once again as our upper air pattern sets up to to produce another favorable condition or a favorable setup for most of the Caribbean. I'm also keeping a very close eye now on 92E out there in the Eastern Pacific. You could see very good organization with it even this far away on a water vapor satellite shot. A potent amount of thunderstorm activity, shower activity associated with this. Very consolidated look on satellite continuing to very, very slowly trudge off to the west and northwest. There is a bit of discontinuity with this. We'll talk about that here momentarily. Some of the models think it could swing back into the Caribbean. Others think it'll slowly loop-de-loop -loop, very similar to what Tammy is out there doing. Tammy is back, by the way. I'm not too sure why National Hurricane Center discontinued advisories for 24 hours. I would have done something in my power to mitigate any politics that refrain from them continuing advisories, even though she kind of wandered in between tropical, subtropical, non-tropical, back to tropical again. But given the fact that we only had 24 hours without advisories, you guys may as well just you know, continued putting them out, but that's just me anyways. We'll talk a little about 92E and how it could potentially impact Central America and Southern Mexico for that matter, or maybe even encourage a little bit more tropical development in our Caribbean Sea. So here is 92E, and looking at the static infrared shot here, you can see it is a really, really organized system. I would anticipate we're going to see development out of this either today, if not tomorrow, as a matter of fact. The next name on the list is going to be Pilar out there, a female name out there in the Eastern Pacific. And if you look down here at the track guidance, this kind of paints a big picture. And if you guys look closely, you're kind of seeing a very similar situation of that of Tammy. If you guys remember the model guidance before we first lost the advisories with Tammy, had it kind of going off to the east, then down to the south, and then there were other iterations that had her going off to the west before looping back around. Very similar pattern out there, believe it or not, over the eastern Pacific. And if you notice, a lot of the models do want to try to take it across Central America. I know none of these solutions offer that primary end result, but as we go into the model data here in a second, you'll see that if few of our deterministic 12 Zulu runs do actually have it cross in AORs. So first and foremost, we definitely saw the infamous break in GFS continuity. Yes, we were reporting on the potential scenario of seeing a hurricane coming out of the Caribbean, and I'm very glad that we covered our bases here in the Weather Center and made it known that we weren't forecasting that specifically because I had a very strong gut feeling that once you advertise the GFS and mention how good it's doing, it tends to pull the rug out from underneath you, unfortunately, and switch up. But we're looking at the upper air pattern from 12 Zulu yesterday and 12 Z today because I want to show you why it is I think the GFS changed up on us, and it does make sense. On the left hand side we have our current 12z iteration of the GFS and on the right hand side we have yesterday's 12z of the 26th of October and as I scroll through time you can see that currently we have a very strong jet streak or a jet max a shared energy region across much of interior conus over the Great Lakes moving out to the east over the eastern Canadian provinces downstairs if you will in the south over the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean we have that upper low breakaway jet finger that we were talking about last week that did eventually break off and move down to the south 
only entrenched in that upper air ridge that we highlighted on the water vapor. So we haven't really seen a whole lot of organization with it. A little bit of increased moisture out there just to the north of our lesser Antilles and north of the greater Antilles to the west of that location, but nothing too significant as of right now. Although it does seem like as it continues to move through and that jet max can finally begin to move that upper air ridge over the southeast off to the east, we can see a little bit of cyclogenesis out of it. And a lot of our models do indicate we could either get a random surface low out of it or maybe even an organized tropical low pressure out of it. And when I say tropical, I don't necessarily mean it's going to develop into a disturbance or a named system for that matter. It just looks to try to consolidate before washing out altogether with all that increased jet activity bringing down our next cold frontal system and trough aloft. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what's happening on both of these images because blink and you'll miss it. We were playing Where's Waldo on my Instagram page not too long ago earlier this morning because I took a long look at exactly what changed across all levels of the atmosphere. I was sitting there obsessing at the surface, 925, 850, 700, 500, 250, and so on and so forth. Forgive me for going auctioneer on you. But I did notice the reason why the GFS has suddenly backpedaled on its previous solutions over the last several days. And it has to do with our jet and our jet alone. And I'll show you. If you look out here on the 12Z yesterday, you could see a very, very strong jet max, a definitive jet max, not only building a ridge over the eastern Pacific, but deepening our next potential frontal system for the western United States. And then if you glance on over to the left-hand side, notice how that jet max is now split into two distinct jet fingers, and it actually wants to build our ridge a little bit faster than the trough at 12 Zulu. I know we did a little bit of back and forth there, but as I take you through time, it'll make a little more sense. As you continue on from this point, notice how on the right-hand side we have a very deep trough, but then on the left-hand side we have a very minuscule trough and we have more zonal flow, that west to east path of least resistance jet stream taking its way across North America, not really being impeded by any kind of long wave ridges or deep occluded troughs and so on and so forth. But then if you go back to 12 Zulu yesterday, this makes a lot of sense for a system foreign up in the Caribbean because if you look out there across that source region, we have no shear, we have very good anti-cyclonic flow in the upper levels of the environment, which helps with divergence or that upward vertical motion, that rising air that helps to create really potent and robust conditions for our tropical cyclones to deepen down as quick as the GFS was showing. And because it wanted to take that northwestward track and then kick to the northeast, it was a direct result of that trough moving across central conus and then allowing that system to travel up to the north and eventually move over the southeastern United States at the last second there. If you look very closely, these are upper level winds, but you can see a little bit of that reflection reflection of that surface feature the GFS was predicting moving across Cuba and then into the southeast United States. There it goes right there. And because we're not looking at as deep of a trough axis, at least according to our model data today, there are other models reflecting this like the Euro and the Canadian model as well that we'll see a bit more of a zonal pattern set up. At this panel in specific, take a look at the difference between our very, very amplified pattern according to 12Z yesterday and this more zonal flow with a very broad amplitude trough and a really, really broad amplitude ridge on either side of that trough feature, which is why even though the Caribbean could still be favorable to see a storm develop, it's inevitably going to crash into Central America because with that west to east flow over North America, the atmosphere has to respond. And down there in the tropics, we're going to have that prevailing easterly flow driving all of our systems to the west. And a lot of our models are recognizing that. One thing to note is the icon in the Euro last night, 12Z is currently populating. And unfortunately, I can't wait any longer to go ahead and film this video. I do apologize for that, guys. But 12 12Z icon and our 0Z zero zero last night are actually on the same page as the GFS in terms of predicting a secondary low spinning up out there in the Caribbean. You take both of these models off through time, icon on the left, Euro on the right, and you can see we get that first weak entity out there in the Caribbean. Both models actually want to kind of elongate this because I think that upper level cold pocket or that upper low that we highlighted last week on Weather Center is still creating a little area of upper level shear that's going to prevent this thing from fully consolidating and rapidly intensifying. So truthfully, even though I agree with the National Hurricane Center. There is a 30% chance of it developing over the next seven days. We're really not going to see anything catastrophic out of it. It looks to potentially be maybe an elevated wind maker and a lot of rain for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and Cuba, and then eventually the Bahamas as it moves further to the north. For all intents and purposes, with that frontal system coming down, trying to give us some cold air for Halloween, it doesn't look like it's going to make it. But with that next frontal system in the trough I showed you at 250 millibars, that's actually going to once again create that southeast United States force field, at least for this first system. We'll have to wait and see since we're so far out in terms of what the models want to do with our upper air pattern. If that channel for it to drift north later on down the road comes back, or if we do continue to reinforce the idea that we're going to have that zonal west to east jet flow, not only with our subtropical jet, but the polar front jet 
then we're just going to have a lot of prevailing easterly winds out there over the Caribbean source region. And anything that does try to spin up, albeit it could intensify, is going to be driven straight across Central America and into the East Pack, just like TD21 was a few days ago. Anyways, real quick, you can see we get that first system through. It does have a little bit of elevated winds with it, but then it gets rapidly absorbed by that next incoming trough system. The big thing with this, since we have that trough coming down, it's going to depend on how strong of a front and how strong of a jet we have digging that trough down across the south into the Gulf of Mexico, because that is where some of the model guidance wants to have 92E drift back over the Central American landmass and eventually interact with our Caribbean source region. Now, if you pay close attention to 92E right here, especially on the Euro, the icon doesn't reflect this. It has a sort of stalling out and then beginning another push down to the west-northwest away from any major landmass. But if you watch the Euro and track this through time, right about now where we have that green blob and that circulation off the Central American coast, it looks to track through right across El Salvador into Honduras, Nicaragua, and then emerge once again into the Caribbean, getting pushed a little bit further to the east. It's a little hard to see on this model, but if you were to look at a precip diagram or a relative humidity diagram, and you can track the remnant moisture with it, it does try to plant itself out there in the central southern Caribbean, and then there you have it. You can see a little bit of a weak spin on both the models at this point, trying to get going, which is exactly what the GFS has been showing the last few days. So, you know, the GFS may not be as far out to lunch as we thought, and it was probably indicating that channel of energy or that leeway, if you will, for that storm to pass to the north and head towards the southeast United States. At the time, it was anticipating a more amplified meridional long wave pattern with the jet. And now because it's more zonal, it still wants to develop it, but it tracks it due west, giving it no opportunity to turn into that hurricane it was forecasting during the middle parts of this week. These are going to be our 0Z Euro probabilities. And once again, we really haven't seen a whole lot of fluctuating with that disturbance highlighted by National Hurricane Center. It is down there. You could see it on satellite imagery, especially infrared and visible. There's a disorganized area of thunderstorm activity trying to propagate to the north slowly as that ridge begins to break down and we replace it with that next ridge coming through out of the east and the northeast out of the Atlantic after that trough can come through. Also, that area that I highlighted on the water vapor between our ridges, that's also helping to kind of bring all that stuff to the north. We have a lot of moving pieces down there, a lot of little embedded shortwave vortices or basically little small spins in the upper levels of the atmosphere like we've seen the vorticity charts before. There's a lot of little embedded vortices down there that are trying to lift to the north in between those blocking ridges. So as such, the Euro still has a pretty high chance that we could see development out of it, 45-50% chance. This hasn't changed over the last few days. It wanders to the north, over the Bahamas, and out to sea. And then you can see as you go through time, there goes that secondary round of potential formation a little bit lower during this iteration. I definitely want to see what 12Z shows because we are seeing indications across other models, so maybe we'll see the probabilities go up to be determined. Now this I thought was interesting. These are our 12Z GFS ensembles. And if you track this through time, even though our new operational run since 0Z yesterday have that low, not the first one highlighted, but the second one in the beginning of November, even though the operational model has it traveling to the west, there you have it right about now. You see all that area of probable formation indicated by our ensembles with the GFS. And every single member for that matter, outside of maybe one or two weak ones, have it traveling to the north still and coming across Florida as a very major storm. I mean, look at this. Those indicators indications there. Those color codings indicate a storm right around 950 millibars. So the GFS ensembles are still thinking we have to watch that as we go forward in time. And you can see even towards the back end of this loop, we do have a little bit later development called for by the GFS ensembles. And even those want to track to the north. So we really got to pay close attention again to what's happening out in the Pacific. We want to track what those long wave features and what the jet's doing and any indications that we're wobbling around, moving to the south, amplifying features or potentially having stronger jet level winds come coming across the Pacific into the United States, that could play a role in going back to what the GFS was forecasting for between Tuesday and yesterday evening at 18 Zulu in terms of a storm forming up and actually being allowed to walk a little bit further to the north instead of crashing headfirst into Central America like we've seen plenty of lows do this hurricane season. We're going to quickly go through our 0Z Euro ensembles. I know, once again, I should have waited for 12Z to come in, but I do apologize, guys, for the inconvenience. I just couldn't wait to do this video. I'm not going to have another opportunity to do so. You can see that the Euro ensembles do try to get a little low pressure out of that storm highlighted by National Hurricane Center. I don't doubt that we could see tropical depression formation. It's going to be a close call as to whether we get vents out of it. We do have a favorable setup, and those waters are still very hot. We've been reporting on that all hurricane season long. But, you know, it looks in terms of the general consensus is that the models really just don't want to get this thing going. And I think it's in part due to that trough that's still out there, or that upper low that's slowly wandering across the greater Antilles into the Bahamas that I showed you on the upper air pattern. Then as you
you go down the road, you can see the second iteration of what could possibly develop down there. And this is when things get a little more serious, albeit we don't have very many Euro ensembles indicating the threat for development. You can see that every single one of the ones that do want to develop it go easily into hurricane territory, some approaching major hurricane status before hitting the Cayman Islands and going across Cuba, one of them being at a 945 low central pressure, which is a Category 3, Category 4 storm. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it. I'm not putting any kind of money into this just yet. It does look like we have a favorable setup coming in over time. It's just going to be a wait and see situation with the upper air pattern over North America and the Pacific. We don't want to fixate too hard in the Caribbean because it looks like everything's there for something to form up. It's going to be a matter of what happens up ahead, or I should say back behind it, coming out of the West across the upper portions of the globe for that matter that are going to stimulate whether or not we get something. And if it goes to the North, if we get a little something and it moves to the West, won't really be able to develop at all, maybe become an Eastern Pacific situation. You know, time will tell. But once again, guys, I can't emphasize to you enough, we always want to look at the big, the huge picture, if you will, the macro scale environment before we come all the way in and start focusing on impacts and development of one singular micro to mesoscale storm down there like a hurricane. Anyways, folks, that'll wrap it up for today's Friday segment of Weather Center Nazario. I do really hope to see you tonight for our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. Friday Night Live is always a little bit more exciting of a chat room for everybody and all my recurring viewers. It's always a good time, good vibes, good energy, and we do definitely talk tropics and get a little more on the casual side so everybody can kind of connect with one another, which is a good thing. I will also make sure to provide you additional details on this fundraiser that I truly want to get going. It is going to get going, guys. I have a couple of different organizations and a few individuals that I know who are near and dear to me working in the background to help try to find a few more affiliates that'll help give us a reasonable entity to send our donations and our efforts across to those areas hit hard by Hurricane Otis. I will openly tell you guys, last I checked, I haven't had a lot of time over the last 24 hours to do so, but I came across numbers stating that the death toll is at 27 and expected to climb. So overall, it is a very grim situation down there. I've read reports that after the storm went through, even days after the storm has gone through, the area has gone into anarchy because they're cut off from the rest of the civilized world. National Guardsmen are down there trying to help out, but they really haven't had a whole lot of relief efforts kick off because of just how in ruin the local area is. So I really, it goes without saying, I really want us to work together and get this going, guys. They could use all the help they could get, and because you guys have been so cordial and gracious to my account, I think it's time we pull together and help others out, especially since we talk about this on a regular basis, the severe weather that goes on across the globe. Anyways, folks, we'll see you tonight at our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk, and then we'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. for our next full segment of Weather Center Nazario. But until then, you know the catchphrase. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.